Good morning, everyone. It is today, Monday, March 30th. Yes, we're almost at the end of the month of March. April is upon us. Pesach is upon us. And let's be realistic that given from uh, the latest outlooks, it looks like we will be continuing in this mode for quite some time. It seems to be at least a month, according to what was announced last night from the White House, social distancing through April 30th, which takes us well through Pesach, which is uh, distressing, upsetting, gives us anxiety, it's sad, uh, Pesach alone, but uh, this is what we have to do because we see what happens when people do not follow the instructions that terrible things are happening. This is uh, really quite real, and we have to, um, you know, we have to abide, we have to do our part. And uh, also just uh, very sad to see the news that uh, Mr. Newman, who was attacked in the anti-Semitic attack in Muncie, that he passed away from his injuries uh, last night, and uh, his Nisham should have an aliyah, and we should only uh, celebrate celebrate good things. Um, just for this week, it's, it's Monday, we're going to have a few Zoom sessions this week. We'll have our Tuesday-Thursday Zoom session with Erica Brown in the afternoon. She'll be discussing matters relating to the Seder. And Tuesday morning, we will have our... Uh, women's class, also dealing with aspects of the Seder. Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, the Men's Club Annual Seder. It'll be slightly different this year. It'll be online, but we will have material for the Seder. And, um, of course, please make sure to keep sending in your sale of chametz forms. And I try to acknowledge every single one that I get to make sure that you know that I'm taking care of it for you. And, of course, any questions that you have in preparing for Passover and any Pesach needs, please don't hesitate to ask. Oh, by the way, some people have been asking about this picture. Um, this picture that's behind me, if I can pull it up. It's one of our favorite pictures. Uh, this is actually when, uh, when Moshe's first visit to Israel, we had our whole family. It's actually uh, the only time that my parents, should live and be well, that they had their entire family, all their grandchildren and children uh, together, let alone in Israel. And Moshe was six months old and that was his first visit to the Kotel. And um, my brother-in-law, again, I'll look at this picture. He had a, he was standing in the Kotel Plaza with a zoom lens and he was able to get this shot. And we have it blown up in many places. So it's one of our uh, favorite, favorite family pictures that we keep around, but I know you keep seeing it in the background and a couple of people have asked me, so I wanted to share that with you. Uh, just a short Tvar Torah for today. Again, as we're getting ready for Pesach, one of the things that I'm thinking about is a line in the Haggadah that says, B'mesei ma'at. The, in, in expounding the verses in the Magid portion of the Haggadah, it says that we came few in number. It says, your fathers went down to Egypt with 70 souls, and now you're as numerous as the stars of the heaven. It's that, a few souls, a few in number. That's how we feel right now, especially with the onset of Pesach coming and uh, we're going to have Seder, some people alone, two people, three people max, um, and it's it's off-putting. So how do we reconcile this no notion of B'mesei Ma'at? So I'll, I'll break out to you another one of my favorite Haggadahs here. This is called The Night That Unites, and it is a uh, Pesach Haggadah from... Um, Teaching stories and questions from Rav Cook, Rav Salavechik, and Rav Shlomo Karbach. A very interesting combination, uh, but it's done by uh, a friend of mine, Rabbi Aaron Goldschneider, uh, who really did a wonderful job. And again, you would never think to put those three together necessarily, uh, but alas, here they are. So I want to share with you uh, this insight that we have from Rav Cook. It says that when they, the family of Jacob came down to Egypt, and we're told in Parshas Vayigash, the Torah says that they went down to Shivim Nefesh with 70 soul, the soul is written in singular as opposed to souls in plural. This hints to us that Jacob's family was united like a single person with a single heart. Rav Cook teaches that the entire Jewish people have a single soul, which is merely divided among every individual in our nation. He made an acute observation regarding the same point when commenting upon the experience of the Jewish people at Har Sinai, at Mount Sinai. When God gave the Torah to the Jewish people, it says, Vayichan Shom Neged Ahar, and he encamped in the singular, was used to describe the masses of people standing around the mountain. Rashi, the great medieval Torah commentator, in expounding the Torah's strange uses, usage of the word Vayichan in the singular, he said it was used because the Jews were like a single entity. Famous words, it says, Ki'ishechad b'levechad, with a single person and a single heart. However, when discussing 
the unity of the Egyptians in hot pursuit of the children of Israel at the shores of the Red Sea, or the Reed Sea, Rashi uses a similar term. Yet it was a verse to Levechad Ishechad, a single heart and a single person. Why the difference? Why are the Egyptians called like a single heart and a single person, whereas the Jews are described as a single person with a single heart? Rav Cook explained that the unity of the Egyptians flowed merely from the fact that they had a unity of purpose. They all had the same goal, to recapture their Jewish slaves. They were first and foremost of one heart, Balevachad. They had a common goal, and as a result, they were unified, Ki'ishachad, like a single unit. This is not the case for the children of Israel. The Jewish people have an inherent unity which exists regardless of personal beliefs and interests. We are a family, and a family has an unbreakable bond. No matter where its members may be or what they may do, we are, above all else, a single unit. So let's keep that in mind, as we may be having satyrs that are feeling lonely, or maybe we feel that this year is different. Why is, we can ask that question, why is this year different than all other years? But we should know that we're part of a larger entity, we're part of a larger person, and the Jewish people are indeed one person. Ish echad, lev echad. If we keep that in mind, if we keep our focus in mind, then we'll be able to get through these difficult times, I think, in, in good fashion, and we'll be stronger for it. I keep saying that over and over, but I mean that, is that um, I'm, I'm really excited to see how our community is going to look on the other end of this, because um, I think that this is a tremendous test that God has given us, and we can pass this test with flying colors. We may be physically separate, but indeed we are one person, we are one unit, and nothing can break that up. So I hope everybody has a great week. I hope that uh, we stay strong and that we stay uh, resolute in understanding what it is that we have to do, and that we look out for those who are in need, and that we make sure that we pick up the phone and call and say hello, etc., etc., do favors where possible, and of course, uh, we have to be, most importantly, stay healthy. So have a wonderful day, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.